Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. Welcome again, everyone, to Bear Bets, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, use that code BearBets, BearBets, for new customers. Get $200 in bonus bets. Wow. Season's flying by, my man. Three weeks left in the regular season. Conference championship weekend, selection day, uh, and then Army, Navy, and Heisman, Heisman Trophy ceremony, and then the playoff on the, uh, what, the... 20th, right? Then when the uh, 20th, the I had to change a, I changed a flight to fly out on the, I had to go somewhere in the 20th. I had to, my wife wanted to fly in the 21st bear and I told her like, yeah, that's not happening. So I'm flying out no. by myself on the 20th so I could watch college Holy. football uh, on, on the 20th. And then there's three games on the 21st and uh, we're off and rolling. I'll tell you what though, it just feel different though, be, just because the 12 team playoff, you know, like when you look at the playoff rankings each and every week and the, you know, sort of like the, how you view a 12 team playoff that'll be three or four games, depending on where you are, who can win the playoff. My mind has changed basically about sort of my playoff bubble. It always used to be two teams, right? Like two of the four teams that are in my playoff bubbles expanded now. So I'm kind of curious to see where these teams end up and sort of which teams I think have a chance to win a championship. You know, I, I, you're right because I was in the same boat is you like I, I thought before the year Ohio State and Georgia were the clear favorites and it would be one of those two teams ultimately that won the national championship and, and the way the season has played out and, and Georgia has not looked like the yeah. Georgia we expected uh, Ohio State's offensive line has some problems now I, I think you can make a, a a case for Oregon a case for Ohio State obviously a case for Texas uh case still obviously for Georgia and Ole Miss I, I think those would yeah. probably be the five teams that one of those five teams ultimately would still be. I, mean, I think Alabama fans might take a little exception to that, being that they've got some wins. Um, as well, I don't know if Tennessee can get there with that offense right now, the way they're they're playing. But yeah. five is still more than two, and uh, I, I thought all, ultimately this playoff was doing was expanding the number of fan bases that were going to be uh, talking college football yeah. later in the season and being more excited about saying their team could be in a playoff game but not necessarily having a chance to win. But, but I think uh, certainly with the teams like uh, Georgia right now on the, on the playoff bubble and maybe uh, another SEC team, whether it's Texas A&M, whether it's Tennessee, whether it's Texas, who the hell knows that um, certainly the interest level on the sport yeah. here is going to be pretty great over the final couple of weeks over the, uh, the regular season. Yeah. I took an old miss plus 1000 with the championship bear after the Georgia game. Now, yeah, we talked about that last yeah, week about what was yeah. last week prior to that Georgia game, the time to do that. And, and clearly that price got slashed big time once they pulled the upset. I'm, I'm okay with that. Cause I kind of wanted to see mm-hmm. old miss do this Same. first because they hadn't, they hadn't had this game yet. And you think about sort of the championship method, right? The, the way you win championships in college football. One is, you know, explosive offense. Mississippi has that. Now, I think sometimes you can argue there are, you know, there are times it has slowed down, but, and generally speaking, I, I sort of trust the big play uh, capabilities of this offense, which you need. Again, we talk about explosive plays all the time on the flip side bear. Their defensive line is really good. And yes. um, the, you know, they went hard in the portal. They went hard to high school recruiting to build this defensive lineup, to make it so where they weren't so one-sided. And when you can rush the passer, affect the run game, it gives you an opportunity, A, to, to force punts, to force turnovers, give your offense to short field. And they have that recipe. Now, they're going to have to win four games in a row, right? Because I don't, I don't think they can get an NC championship game. I mean, I guess they certainly can. There's a bunch of tiebreakers they have to figure out there. But um, 
they have a chance, Bear. I think they have a real chance, depending on how this breaks out, depending on how the bracket goes. Um, I think there's a chance that they can get themselves to a semifinal. And then once you're in a semifinal, you're, you're, you're two games away. You win that, you're, you're one game away. So um, they have the recipe, the formula that we've seen champions have in the past. But like, like you're telling me that based on the, I think the rankings that were out there and the bracket that's out there, I, I didn't pay a ton of attention to it. But like, if they play a first round game at Penn State, that game's a toss up, right? Uh, and, and yeah, Penn I would State's going to move the ball on them. No, I would take Ole Miss in that game. Yeah, yeah exactly. Hey, yeah, that's what hey, I'm saying. Hey, like it. it... <clears throat> the other thing, Barrett, that I found interesting about the playoff, um, the five seed, whoever gets the five seed, which will probably presumably be the loser of Oregon, Ohio State, um, kind of has a decent path to make a semifinal. With oh, you know, obviously they play one extra game, but. You're going to get probably Boise State. Now, of course, Oregon and Boise State play that game close early in the season, but you know the, the Oregon's different now. Or Ohio State will we'll get them. They'll get a home game. And then you're going to play the four seed, which is presumably the Big 12 champion. I know by rankings it's not at the moment, right. but it probably will be by the time we get to, to the playoff. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be a favorite in that game. And then obviously you get Ohio State, who would be one if they beat Oregon. Um, so like the five seed is not a bad place to be no. if you're not going to win a, 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 your conference. No, not, not at all. And it'll be curious to see ultimately who winds up being that big 12 champion. Cause I think right now, Colorado is actually favored to win the, win the league based on how BYU is kind of yeah. just getting by. And the fact that Colorado has been playing so much better over the, uh, the last few years. Yeah. Imagine saying to a couple to people, I know like with, with the, like, 10 seconds left in that Baylor game that uh, Colorado is going to be yeah. favored to win the, win the big 12 and maybe get to the playoff the, <laughs> where we were then. But uh, yeah, I didn't get too worked up about the, the playoff rankings. Look, I, I, I disagree with it, with a lot of the rankings. They yeah. basically get a lot of loss ordering uh, in, in, at, at the top. And I don't know how you move Indiana and BYU up multiple spots off of a, uh, the teams that they beat last week in the fashion that they won. They just make it up and, as and they then, go. Yeah, exactly. And, and then somehow yeah. like Alabama only moves up uh, a spot after blowing out LSU and Baton Rouge. Like, yeah, it, it, I think I want, I am like almost wonder if they were like, we just want to get this over and done with this week. It really it's changing week in and week out. So uh, it is curious. It'll be curious to see ultimately uh, what happens here. That needs look, the two big leverage games, obviously next week, uh, to Ohio State hosting Indiana, and then this week, Georgia hosting Tennessee. So, uh, so much more talk about the playoff, Big 12 champion, uh, make, miss, national title, and, and all the big games coming up this week at the Gambling Group Chat. Sammy P. and Will join Jeff and I. Gambling Group Chat time once again. Myself and Jeff, as always, joined by Sammy P. and Will Hill. And guys, I wasn't sure if you were aware, but Tuesday, some idiot, uh, went on a, a Georgia podcast with the uh, former Georgia head coach, Jim Donnan, and was talking about the game this weekend between Tennessee and Georgia and said that uh, Tennessee quarterback Nico Iomaliava uh, may not play because uh, he had a concussion last week and he was in concussion protocol. And I and he was hearing that he might not. And that, that kind of sent Sully, our, our producer, his uh, his vol Twitter people all up, up in our big orange nation uh Currently hates your boy here. Who, uh, by by the way, a couple of the good responses that were uh, that were on there. That who cares what this fat bleep for nice four letter word says? Uh, he was uh, he was fired by ESPN, uh, which is that's only half true. Yeah, I am overweight, but I wasn't fired. <laughs> I actually got a nice deal from Fox after my my contract was up at ESPN. And then what the hell does he know? all his picks on FanDuel are always wrong anyway. And I, I'm not sure maybe are they confusing me either with Gronk or maybe Kay Adams on FanDuel? Well, I like, I mean, I, I don't, I, last I checked, I don't make picks in FanDuel every now and then I do get the, the big noon parlay on, uh, on DraftKings, which is, uh, which is good. We hit it last week at, at six to one, which was quite nice. But uh, yeah, t Tennessee, uh, Tennessee fans not liking my, uh, my, I want to say report, but me being kind of told by someone who would, kind of did a little dig in there about Tennessee's quarterback may not playing. And we've seen that number now. I think it's up to 11 in some spots total around 48 and a half. So you're probably late to the party. If you are, were looking for the best number on Georgia, I still think under is a great way to play this game, Sammy, because uh, I, I think even with Nico, if he, if indeed 
the intel's wrong and he does play, you're probably not going to see very many points from the Tennessee offense on the same side. Does Georgia right now offensively have enough to really move the ball time after time again and score in Tennessee? So uh, I think under right now with the numbers that are out there, probably the, uh, the best way to play this game. My favorite responses, though, are the ones that say, you'll never make it without Stanford Steve. Stanford Steve <laughs> carried you. Yep. Those are my <laughs> – you'll never cut it without oh, Stanford oh, Steve. Oh, the best. We, we, we were together. I mean, uh, you separate, forget it. Uh, no, no shot for either of us without without each other. To, uh, Just post a picture out. of yourself in scanty clad to close. Yeah, what do I know? I, I never played the game. You guys are both doing fine for the record. Uh, not that you need my validation. Look, Nico's practicing. Now, the problem is we don't know what practice looks like, and we won't. And, you know, I learned a long time ago there's a difference between being at practice, actually practicing, and then being ready to go by Saturday. I trust your sources. I got eight texts last night. Did you see what the bear said on Barstool? I'm like, the bear was on Barstool. No, Barstool took a clip of what you said. May have taken it a little far because they used all caps, not expected to play, which is basically them saying that you said he's out, which you didn't say. Um, look, there's there's mining going on. I know a guy who, who says he's going to bet 11 no matter what because he thinks Nico is going to play. Um, I guess the question is, what is the number if he's out? And what is the number if he's in? If he's out... We're probably 11 and a half, 12. I don't think we get to 13. If he's in, Will, I don't know, eight and a half, eight. Like this is sort of a, a 10 and a half, 10. It's a halfway number. At 11, they're buying into the hype that he might not go. But if he's in, if he clears protocol, and damn it, they're going to wish that he does because <laughs> they need this game. If he does clear it, it's going right back the other way. Uh, I would like to nominate one of my favorite comments from that thread, which I read uh, and you guys overlooked somehow. And that was uh, bears just trying to swing the number in favor of Georgia. I thought that was a good comment. Clearly. Clearly. Yeah. And I think, and I was on your side for the most part. And then I realized, man, I've had you on my podcast a few times. Should have been more podcasts. You do a great job, but you've never made headlines, gotten everybody up in arms. So I'm, I I think I'm annoyed too. I might be with the Tennessee (laughs) fans. I might be on their side. Uh, I'm on the under here. I just think, uh, same sort of handicap as last week, Georgia Ole Miss for Georgia. I mean, Beck, it just looked so bad. And man, that guy is losing money by the week. I don't even know like where and when does he get drafted? Uh, I, you can't think, I, I can't think of a guy whose stock is falling more uh, so rapidly than, than his in the last month or so. Um, they're they're going to be conservative on offense just to protect them with the turnovers. They don't look, I mean, McConkie and Bowers, you watch them in the NFL. They're really good. They haven't replaced those guys. They're just not that good on offense. They got whipped up front, which I think the offensive line will play better this week. They're still pretty good defensively up front. Uh, Tennessee is good defensively. So I think this is an ugly game. That's if I had to take it or lay it, I'd honestly take it just because I don't know that Georgia can pull away from anybody. Now I don't love getting in front of Georgia off of a loss at home. Um, you know, with, with steam coming out of their ears, I understand that that could be a dangerous scenario, but I just think points are going to be at a premium. I could see like, uh, I don't know, a, a 19, 17, 19, 13 game punts, field position, field goals. I, I think this stays way, way under the total. I think this is an ugly game. Uh, and, and last week was a rocking chair winner with Ole Miss Georgia. Now there was a lot of scoring early, but after that, that game completely died down. So I, I think we're looking at a similar type of game here, Jeff. Bear, when people are angry with, uh, with you on social media, just got to put on some, some just not, I guess, less clothes, not put on some clothes, less clothes, post a picture, <laughs> and everyone will forget about your bad take. Um, all right. Yeah, no, 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 one, you know, no, one need to, no one needs to see me in, in less clothes. I, if anything, I should put on one of those uh, meat costumes that we got last <laughs> oh, year. No, Arby's, Arby's meat suit. Um, look, uh, I think this is going to be tough for Georgia's offense once again, guys, because the things that they don't do well – Tennessee's defense does well. Same as you saw last weekend, same as what we talked about the issue with George's offense. They cannot run the football. Tennessee can stop the run. So what happens is, instead of being second and six and third and two, third and one, it's now third and eight. And now the offense become Carson Beck. And the offense being coming Carson Beck without the weapons they had in previous seasons is not a good offense. And they're going to get in the same situation we saw last weekend where they're not going to be able to score. They're not going to move the ball. Yeah, I get it. They're at home now. They're on the road last weekend. And so I think this is a very, to Will's point, to the Bears' point, I think it's a very 
It's a tight game. It's a low scoring game. Because on, on, on the other side, even if Nico does play, there's no guarantee they're moving the ball that much in this game, right? We, 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 we've seen their offense very hot and cold throughout the season. If he doesn't play, they're certainly not moving the ball. The one thing I found interesting, though, about the playoff rankings uh, is in regards to Georgia guys, I saw the comment, uh, well, now Georgia has motivation to play harder. I love how, like, <laughs> Georgia doesn't need motivation to play harder, guys. They already have to win this game anyways. Right now, they are setting the table, though, for a three-loss Georgia to get in the playoff. That started last night with some of the commentary after the playoff rankings came out. But nonetheless, there's no mo there's no more motivation. They, they, they just lost the game last weekend. They're back at home in a must-win. But to win in a must win guys, you have to have the pieces available to do that. And I'm not sure Georgia is the same team we've seen the last couple of years. So I, I, I think low scoring game, um, even if Nico plays, I see the, sort of the exact same game happening, just a, a touch more points for Tennessee in that matchup. Yeah. I, I think the, the biggest issue for Georgia and in, in talking with the, with, with Dane and coach Donovan yesterday on the, on the podcast is just the guys they were expecting to have as playmakers with Ron Ron Thomas getting kicked out and, and then Colby Young being maybe being in limbo right now. So it's like not not having those guys and, and really not backed up to be able to replace those guys with something that they really I don't think we're prepared for. But so you you think that they're kind of laying the groundwork that if Georgia were to lose this game that they would still be in, Jeff? Well the the media seems to be doing that. We saw yesterday you know, someone come on and be like, oh, three-loss team. Three, and they're talking about Georgia, right? The three-loss Georgia team. Um, I I think, yes, I think they are. Um, okay. I think if Indiana loses one game, well, we'll, we'll talk about this, of course, next week. Like if Indiana loses by three touchdowns, they're out. They're, they're not in the playoff, right? If BYU loses one game, and obviously they lose two, they're not in the playoff. Like, I think these they're going to jettison these teams out as soon as possible, and we're going to end up with – more SEC and Big Ten teams in the playoff that people would would like. But, but by the way, have have any teams gotten like you look at Indiana, you look at Texas. I mean, you talk about getting a bump from beating a god awful Michigan team. I mean, Texas has got nothing on their schedule in terms of wins outside. I mean, I mean, you won at Michigan, who's terrible. You beat Vandy, who was ranked at the time. You, you lost by two touchdowns on your home field to, to to Georgia, and then you got Indiana, who's got nothing. I mean, no no teams with a winning record they they've beaten, and they got past that Michigan team last week at home in a really really ugly game. So, like like I mean, we, the committee might want to reassess like how good they think Michigan is because that's a bad Michigan team, and Texas and Indiana are getting massive boosts right now uh, because of that win. But, yeah, I think we all kind of see the same thing, ugly type game. You mentioned, Jeff, about the uh, the kind of teams maybe to miss the playoff. Um, again, I'm putting I'm putting this in the exact words in our producer's mouth because I don't want to hear it from anyone. This is, this is from Sean, our producer, Tennessee guy. Tennessee to miss the playoff is a great bet, BTW, at plus 230, all right? That's my producer, Tennessee guy, saying it's a great bet. But uh, I don't know, man. I, I think it's going to be hard to, to, to keep them out at 10 and 2 with the win over Batman, I mean, even though I think uh, we are may maybe going to be in a situation where a, a 10 and 2 SEC team could be, could be in peril. But see what happens. It's going to play out one way or another. Who has Tennessee. these markets, by the way? The yes, no, because you can find the yeses. It's it's not as easy yeah. to find the nos. No. And, and we're in Connecticut, where um, right. you know we're, we're getting even less of this stuff. So I quit. I mean, Jeff kind of talked around it, but if you really think that, if you really believe that, Jeff, Indiana, no, because the yes is minus five hundred. If they're giving you a halfway fair price, the yes to miss or, or the no to make it. Um, so, so Indiana missed the playoffs at what plus three twenty something like that. I mean, what is that an auto bet? Because I'm not as sure with one loss they're automatically going to be out. Seems like you I are, but Indiana, I, I don't no, know who it, has these bears? No, it's uh, DraftKings has no plus three hundred right now for no okay. plus three hundred. I mean, look, if they lose by four touchdowns, which I mean seems unlikely, I think, but you know they struggled with Michigan the second half of that game. They were exhausted trying to beat beat a Michigan team that yeah. can't move the football. I mean, if if they lose thirty eight twenty one. Let's just throw that number out there. They'll have no wins against ranked teams, right? They'll have no wins against anyone that even has a, a vote. We've we, we joked about that extreme. 
Are they in over a three loss Georgia? Do you think they're in over a three loss Georgia team? I think so. Okay. I just don't know. Georgia plays, Georgia finishes with UMass and Georgia Tech. Are they going to get enough of a bump after back to back losses this late? Ah, it's going to be tough. I think it would be, I think it would be tough. To, I think they, if Georgia wins this week, they're, they're in. Yes. Barring a collapse against Georgia Tech the final game of the year. Uh, if, if they lose, it's going to be rough sledding, I think, uh, for the, uh, for the dogs. But, but m- m- moving ahead to it, but, but you, you mentioned something about these yes, no, it's like, like I, I was kind of poking fun at some bad math earlier in the week too. Like it has Indiana ninety three percent to yeah to, to make the playoffs. Like are you kidding? I, I would love for ESPN bet to to post a yes no market up based on Indiana being ninety three percent to make it. I, I would be more than happy to to give my former employees book to a, a a no price in Indiana if they were posting a, a number ba- a yes no based on ninety three percent in so. Uh, and as we know, the, the DraftKings numbers certainly. Did you also see that one of these books was offering a price on the Cavs to go eighty-two and zero? Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Oh, stop! Did you see what the yes was? Stop. It was it was a thousand to one. It should be like ten million. To Wait, one. that's it? A thousand to one? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Wait, of oh. course, with with no no price, just the yes. Will Cleveland go undefeated? A thousand to one. Sure, if somebody bet it, I'm sure people bet it too, just because hey, it's a thousand to one. Yeah. Well, it should be it should be in the millions. I was gonna yeah. say add like four zeros. <sighs> they still play 82 games, right? In the NBA, they still play 82 last I checked. Well, not not for everyone, but yes, but most teams do. Some 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 guys only play like 60% of plays. I was gonna say the teams I think play 82 and the players play like 55, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean that's not that. I mean that's not that far fetched. An eighty-two game winning streak. I mean it's it's possible, oh. right? What 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 if, what if they go eighty-two and zero in the regular season, then win every playoff game? What, what, what would be number? Yeah, what are that? those numbers for sure? Friend of the show, Ed Salmon said he would offer ten billion to one. On the, on the, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, that still a, might be under price. Thousand to one that they win eighty-two in a row? No, that's not laughable. happening. That, that's so bad. Speaking of a team that that's gotten hot and won some games and really could be a hell of a lot better than their win re- one loss record right now at six and three, South Carolina they kind of blew that game against LSU very easily could have beaten Alabama, uh, lost by two they did lose to Ole Miss and it kind of handily but great job by Shane Beamer and the and the Gamecocks six and three could easily be eight and one they're a double digit favorite over Missouri uh, Sammy who but I, I think. The writing's kind of on the wall that Drew Pine is again going to be the quarterback. I mean, we, we talk about some of these teams that have fraudulent records, and there probably isn't one that, that's a bigger fraud than Missouri. Right? Like, they easily could have lost to Boston College at home, easily could have lost to Vandy, should have lost to Oklahoma. Like, like it, it, this is a team that very easily could be four and five right now. Somehow they're seven and two, somehow they're ranked. Uh, double digit dog. I don't know if I want to lay twelve with South Carolina, but I'd be really curious on a uh, on a Missouri team total and looking at an under here, maybe even under uh, for the game because that South Carolina defense is good. Imagine if you would have been holding like I almost did. I almost bet Oklahoma plus two before the news started to leak out about Brady Cook, <laughs> and Oklahoma goes to about a three three and a half point favorite. Oklahoma is winning by a touchdown with two minutes to go, and Missouri scores a touchdown at 103 and at the 22 second mark. I don't know how it happened. I'm just glad I stayed off the game. Um, very lucky win, very lucky cover for Missouri. Cook's on the list. I don't expect him to play. You know, you guys get the list I sent. Brady Cook's on there. Nico's on there, obviously. Uh, Green at Arkansas, who we expect to play. And then Lagway at Florida. Um, you know, conflicting reports about Lagway progressing allegedly, but you're right, Bear. I mean, it but sounds Billy like Andy it'll be said last week he, he wasn't he, he was still in consideration to play. And like I mean, he mean he had like there was never a chance he was gonna play last week. It's unbelievable. I, I wouldn't play him the rest of the oh. season, but I'm not I'm not running the program, nor will I ever. So that's a moot point. Florida's a four point dog at home. Line basketball actually, job says, might be open. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> line says he might go. I mean, if you look at the line, that's indicative right. of, um, or indicative of of Lagway playing. But it, it sounds like it's Pine, which doesn't make me excited. 
the the fact that they opened it north of 10 says a lot to me um you know circa opens up right away and it gets whacked up to 13 13 and a half now there's been a little buyback but just from a numerical standpoint if i was a missouri fan and i saw that we're a 12 point favorite 13 point favorite on the road i would i would see the writing on the wall uh yeah and i i had oklahoma last week i had in a 24 hour span oklahoma wake plus seven and a half up three with the ball with like a minute left and Florida team total under 14 and a half uh, as they just completely exploded in the third quarter somehow. So uh, it wasn't Florida a bad weekend. Overall. That was tough. Off. You're, you're oh. kicking field goals, yes. man. Give me a friggin' break. And it's still, and it it's got still so over. lopsided with the interceptions that Texas was scoring so quick. And then they were just up so big. They lost their intensity defensively, but uh, I'm with you. I, I, that was my first thought on this game. Bears under 14, half team total. I just don't know on the road. I mean, South, South Carolina has got some monsters on defense and they're not going to score enough where, you know, they take their foot off the gas defensively to me, you know, s- scoring seven, 10 points, anything other than that, it's just going to have to be uh, something where they create it with turnovers, create it with defense. And that's a bet you're willing to make. So, 14 and a half team total under is one I'm going to bet. The, the tough part about Missouri is you're going on the road and you can't drain any explosive plays. We, we talk about this a lot, guys, right? Like the ability to create offense quickly. If you create offense slowly against South Carolina's defensive line, you're going to struggle. They may have the best defense on the country. A uh, good buddy of mine, Cole Cuba, covers SEC, covers all, the, the entire country. Said they have the best defense on the country. Like Missouri's not going to move the football in this game. So I think under 14 half is the way to play it. Um, and, you know, I, I just, it's going to be a low scoring game and Missouri's not going to score. I mean, I, I'm kind of like, Will, I had the under for Florida as well. I kind of oh. burned, it burned us last week. 17 points like after the game was over. It, it was frustrating. And as soon as they went over the team total, they just shut it down. They stopped scoring, which we, we knew would happen, obviously. It's frustrating. Yeah, between that one and then I had the uh the Niners team total over on Sunday. I know NFL pod stuff. Oh. But but you Moody misses three field goals. I mean, come on. I mean, and they muffed a punt. Yep, that's that's the shit that happens. So it uh that's why they can we can we get can we get a refund? Is, is there like a, yeah, mix, void. a missed field goal void void the bet because of uh, three missed field goals? I'm sure someone was crying about it. Speaking of Texas and uh, that Texas blowout win over Florida, uh, Longhorns, big favorite this week at Arkansas, 13 and a half total, uh, 57 and a half. Texas still, I mean, I mentioned it before, they're number three in the college football playoff rankings at eight and one, despite uh, not really having a win worth it, worth it. You look, as I said, you look at three Texas, four Penn State, five Indiana in the playoff rankings. Uh, they have a combined zero wins over a team that's currently ranked, whereas Alabama sitting there at 10 has four of them along with the, with the two losses. And I, again, I kind of, I kind of took a little shot at ESPN and my former employer there before with their, uh, with the bad math and that playoff predictor. One of the things that I was a part of in the conversations of like creating things to try and differentiate like college football metrics. One of the things I was most proud about what we were able to do during my time there was creating this strength of record metric, which basically is what you've achieved against the schedule that you have played, a way of differentiating, like how does a a 10 and two team stack up with a, an 11 and one team and such like that, like, like how, what you do against the schedule you are given. And it basically it's a way to cr- try and say, Hey, it's possible for Georgia at, it's seven and two to be more impressive than what Indiana is at 10 and 0. That's what you kind of look at with strength of record right now. Texas strength of record is 10, by the way. So like they clearly are not have not been tested in terms of like anyone would really be expected to be eight and one against the schedule they have faced, whereas Georgia, uh, number three in, t- in terms of strength of record, like their seven and two is more impressive than Texas is eight and one or Indiana is 10 and 0. Or uh, uh, SMU's eight and one, like like it's a way to kind of differentiate this. So uh, take a look at the the strength of record there, the ESPN metrics. Usually, the college football playoff committee by the end of the year kind of falls in line, and that's a good barometer because uh, it's more resume based than anything. So we'll, we'll see if that ultimately happens. Anyway, I just needed to get to give my give a little SOR, a little pop here, but Texas at Arkansas, Sammy, you touched on it. We don't know if green is going to play. Uh, Texas's defense is still really good. Last time we saw uh, Arkansas 
couple weeks back. They got absolutely uh, rolled by Ole Miss, losing 63-31. Uh, I don't have a play here on, on this game, uh, it, just just because I, I, I think I think Texas offensively is going to be able to score some points in an Arkansas defense that hasn't been great lately. And again, I just don't know how good that that hog offense is going to be by um, against a really good Texas defense. Well, I'm willing to find out. I actually yeah, I was well, texting with our buddy in Vegas, and I I like the dog in the game, but that came through 14. I mean, this opened 15. And and got blasted right through, like pretty quickly early in the week. They hit they hit fourteen. So now we're sitting thirteen and a half. I still lean to the dog. I think they can score, and I expect Green to play. So Pittman said about an hour ago. I was actually just looking through this. Pittman said that Taylor Green will be probable. So will the running back Jaquindon Jackson. So they're both going to be probable on the injury report. I don't think he says that if they're not. <laughs> I mean, like. He's a pretty honest guy. So if that's the case, I do think there's some correlation with this game. If you like Arkansas, you like the over. If you like Texas, you probably like the under. I might I might wind up on the dog and the over. Uh, our buddy in Vegas likes the over a lot. Uh, he bet 56 and 57 over. So um, I think he's he's on to something. I mean, there's there's correlation. If you like Arkansas, obviously you need them to score. So I, I it makes sense. I'll probably play a little both. Yeah, I was thinking the other way. If you like Texas, you like the over because you're laying points, and you know you're, you're going to need them to uh, to put up a number. Um, you know, Texas team total. You could pick your juice. You could pick your number at DraftKings here. You have to lay a lot of juice. You have to lay 140 if you want to go over the 34 and a half. If you want to go over the 35 and a half, it's more of a, a fair juice, or it's minus 115. They're telling you that 35 numbers, obviously a key number with the uh, with the five touchdowns. I'd still only look towards over. Maybe you split half your bet on the 34 and a half, half on the 35 and a half. I just don't think that Arkansas secondary against the skill guys Texas has. You saw Texas last week. They were focused. They took care of business. They are explosive on offense. Um, look, I don't, I don't love yours, but they've, they've got some receivers. And I just don't know that that Ole Miss game with Ole, uh, Arkansas really sticks in my head where, man, they just got absolutely torched. And I think Texas can do something similar. Wait, so, Will, you mentioned the like looking for these yes, no playoff prices before, like, I actually saw it. I think Jeff, you might have texted it because you were able to access it. Like for Texas, there was a yes price, but no, but there wasn't a no price. Like if you look at Texas, look, I think we all think statistically, metrically, in terms of power ratings and offensive efficiency and defensive efficiency, that Texas is one of the best four, five, certainly twelve teams in the country. But if you look at the resume stuff, say they say they go to College Station in a couple of weeks and lose. And they're ten and two. Not a lot and, of teeth there. Well, I, like yeah. you lost Georgia on your home field. You lost to A and M. The only other team that's going to be ranked that you faced, like, like I know Tennessee fans are worried about them being left out, but you make a good case. Tennessee, at least resume wise, has done a hell of a lot more than Texas. I, I, I'd love to know if there's a a, a no price that exists on uh, on Texas to make the playoff. I don't and I don't buy this right idea. Now. You're going to hear people say this too. Oh, well, they, when they played Michigan, Michigan was a top 15, top 25 team. Hey, that, that doesn't matter. Bad. That was wrong. Like that was incorrect. It's not, oh, they were good when we played them. They were never good. We just thought they were good. And Oklahoma, you know, might have been ranked at the time. I'm trying to think of when that was. Oklahoma's uh, obviously not a good team. So these these wins have not aged well. And, you know, I don't care what they were ranked when they played. That That's not representative when it's that early in the year. There's no uh, there's no market for Texas right now. There is one for A and M, uh, which obviously they play uh, the final weekend of the season. That's A and M's yes three hundred plus three hundred no minus four fifty. Um, for this game though, I, I've been looking at playing teams off a of buy that that have points at home. And Arkansas is off a of buy now. They did get blasted by LSU off the first buy, so maybe that's not the right angle here. But they're plus seven and a half for the first half, right? They're off a of buy. They're feeling fresh. They they typically, good coaching staffs, have a good offensive plan off a of bye. We saw this last weekend with Utah as well, right? They scored 21 points in the first half, zero in the second half. We saw it with, with, uh, with Sunj last weekend, Bear, with Rutgers coming out fast in that first Absolutely. half. Absolutely. Um, we, I don't even know who who won that game. I, have, I didn't even watch the, the second half. I watched the first the half. The University of New Jersey got that win. <laughs> Let's go. I saw it with the first half they covered and moved it along. So I think Arkansas plus seven and a half for the first half is the way I look to play this game. Uh, but certainly Texas full game, I mean, you can kind of do both maybe if, if you think Texas can wear them down in the second half. Well, let me also say, look, I think we need to address the elephant in the room. The Jeff has a Rutgers addiction. 
he, he said four weeks ago he's never betting on Rutgers again, and I think he's bet them some way, shape, or form every game since then. Can you confirm or deny this? No, I did not wager on them. Let me look at their schedule. I, I skipped one game, um, and uh, I, I might actually bet on Minnesota this weekend, who they go to Minnesota, because I think, I think Minnesota's far better uh, than uh, – no, they play Maryland this weekend. I think Maryland's much better than um, than Rutgers. So, no, I, I did not bet on them against USC. There you go. There's your answer, Sammy. Okay. You still have a Rutgers problem. It's okay. I do. Oh, I know I do. I fully admit it. I have a Rutgers problem, yes. This is just for you, Jeff. Thank old you. School, oh, school oh that's I, nice. I love it so much. Beautiful, beautiful helmet. I, have a, I, I do have a son's problem, Thank Sammy. I, I will agree with you. It's all right. I drank too much whiskey on Saturday. I have a problem, too. <laughs> all right, by the way, speaking of whiskey, is the bartender ever going to lose a game? <laughs> I don't know. He's uh, 17 and 13 now. He's, he's on track for a, a winning season, which would be the first ever. <laughs> I guess it makes I guess it makes sense though because the public has heading yeah. into this weekend at least or the last weekend dogs finally got their dogs went eleven and three ATS but October was a bloodbath uh, if you were betting dogs for NFL specifically funny. right what's that just for for NFL though not college right for NFL yeah, yeah he only yeah. bets NFL yeah. Clemson Pitt anyone got anything on this sure. Tigers I guess still kind of in the uh, ECC championship game race uh, Pitt's kind of been a little bit exposed the, the last couple of weeks uh, anyone want to light 10 on the road with Clemson not not no. really uh, they're, they're not getting it at large though right Clemson is there any I think I saw uh, plus 350 for them to make it no could could you uh, and we haven't talked uh, Miami it's amazing we haven't gotten to Miami yet is there a path where Miami trips up again and Clemson gets in the game that was a pretty impressive win I thought last week against Virginia Tech because I'm, uh, I'm actually behind sitting on, yeah I'm sitting on under nine and a half I need one more loss and maybe you know maybe South Carolina steps up for me I don't know but but is there a path for Clemson is the yes worth it at plus 350 or probably not if they beat South Carolina the last game of the year, Miami loses to at Syracuse, or, or I, mean, I don't think they'll lose to Wake Forest, but you never know. They get, probably a very narrow path, I think, to get to that uh, ACC championship. Well, they they I, wouldn't I, I even know. need to beat South Carolina to get in the title game, right? Correct. I'm, I'm saying I, it, it opens up like the yeah. that long type of path, right? Path to as well, because they got the win over Louisville too. Probably Louisville. have to win the conference. I think they probably have to win the conference when you when you're looking at their I mean the, the ACC as a as a as a league just doesn't have anything in the non-conference to yeah. kind of hang their head on. I think that's one bid now too because we've talked about this with my SMU 16 to 1 and like oh no could I hedge could they possibly make his at large I the the ACC and the Big 12 are, are seeming like one bid leagues probably right? And, and how yeah. can you take how can you take SMU as an at large over while well, while we all think BYU is total Schadenfreude, right? Like, like BYU did go there and beat them. So like, how can you take SMU as an at large if you're if you're not going to take BYU potentially as an at large yeah. if they were to, to lose that Big Twelve championship? It blocks game? them out for sure. Uh, Jeff worried this week at all? Laying fourteen <laughs> on the road at Wisconsin. I, I know the Badgers have uh, been blown out a couple of times this year at home against a couple of top ten teams that they played. 42-10 to Alabama, 28-13 to Penn State up there at Camp Randall. Uh, any concern for you? That, I mean, Oregon's been on a roll. It, it, I have a like, yeah, this is one of those things. I have a feeling, and and but but it, it seems like they've been playing at such a high level each of the last however many weeks yeah. since they really that terrible second half at UCLA where they didn't play well. They beat Ohio State and have been playing great. Like they still are college kids. You're you're bound to have a little bit of a clunker, I think, every now and then. I, I'm I'm interested here in uh in taking 14 with Wisconsin at home. So the clunker was the first half last week against Maryland when the team looked completely dead um, and and still ended up with a with a win because their the defense did a good job with a fake punt. Here's the thing about this game that that does worry me though. Uh, Oregon is the only the only Power Four team that's had eight straight conference games without a break. They played since that that bye week early in the season. A straight conference games. They flew to Purdue. They flew to Michigan. Now they're flying to Wisconsin. Uh, it's a it's just been a long stretch of football. Um, they played Maryland off a of bye. They played Wisconsin off a of bye. 
Um, their re organ's relatively healthy. The, the right guard is, is not going to play, but they were okay there. Tez didn't play last Tez, week. No. Um, a little bit of maybe concern there, but I, the offense just looked so boring to me. Whenever I think sort of like, oh, the offense is kind of like, I don't know, it looks kind of boring. The next game, they always sort of have a much better game offensively. Like, like they're mm -hmm. saving things for its content. Like they're better guys. It's just a matter to me about just wear and tear. And, you know, can they get themselves through this game to get to the bye week because they have a bye week between now and, and and when they play Washington. So they're better. Uh, they're a more complete team. Can they mentally push themselves through this sort of eight-week stretch now to get a win against Wisconsin? Wisconsin has, has a, a very narrow path, guys, right? They they just can't move the ball on offense. And Oregon does allow some rush yards, but they don't allow a lot of touchdowns and they don't allow explosive plays. Um, so, Will, I think it will be hard for Wisconsin Um to cover this game if they can't generate explosive plays. I could certainly see a situation where we've seen Oregon, whether it was sort of Michigan, Purdue, Utah last year, like on the road, come out early, just score a bunch of points fast, and sort of the game is over very quickly. Yeah, I mean, you watch them obviously a lot more than, than me or than any of us, I think. But uh, I noticed with Oregon, second half unders can be a good yes, play. I'm trying to think play. they played a couple weeks ago where, you know, they have a, a lot of their games look the same, where they're up 17, middle of the third quarter Michigan, or whatever. Right? The Michigan oh, game, oh, I think. I worked yeah, but although they went, they, they got a late score against Michigan, so maybe it was the week before. It's, against, Illinois. Illinois. it's all Illinois, Will. It's yes. all of them. They they average like four points a game in the third yeah. quarter. They like, pulled literally. The they just kind of. And Lanning had bad yeah. halftime adjustments. Bad halftime adjustments. There you go. Yeah, there you go. And they're not looking for style points. They're just looking to kind of, you know what, go about their business, go on to the next game. So they take the foot off the gas. Those games just kind of die in the second half. So if you're just, uh, you know, you're. you're flipping through the games or you're on your app or whatever, and you see Oregon has a big lead at half or early third quarter, maybe you live bet the under. I think that's probably the only way I look to play this, Sammy. Well, the only thing I'm thinking about in the game, I'm not going to play side or total. We all have Travis Hunter at different prices. Some of you better prices than me. Um, you know, I don't think Genty's winning the Heisman because he's unfairly going to be compared to Barry Sanders, no matter what. And that's going to hold him back. And Cam Ward with a loss is just not going to get the respect that he deserves. Thank so, I think we're down to Hunter and Gabriel. Yeah, I mean, that's where I was going. And you can find Dylan Gabriel. If you shop, you could find a four. Most books are like 350-ish. Um, Lanning has been really good in this role. Uh, not the biggest sample size in the world, but I saw Sully put this in the rundown. Lanning in Oregon when favored by two touchdowns or more, 16 and seven ATS. And maybe if they are up, he keeps Gabriel in and just, just beat Wisconsin to death and run it up and, and pad those stats. I mean, I... I don't know how important the Heisman is to Oregon or to Dylan Gabriel. I'm not going to pretend like I do, but I would, I would think this would be probably the last time they get involved on Gabriel uh, before the season. He's like six to one. Now he's almost four to one. If you have Hunter, this would be probably a decent chance to hedge if you want on Gabriel, yeah. but that's all I'm thinking about. In, 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 on, another way to potentially hedge with Hunter. If you're holding him at a really, really good number, uh, like some of us are, uh, a buddy of mine uh, sent me a yes, no price posted at Circa uh, a cup uh, that, that's up there right now. Travis Hunter to win the Heisman Trophy. Yes, minus 145. No, plus 115. So maybe you, you could also take a little bit of no at plus 115 if you think maybe there could be a situation where Oregon loses a Big Ten championship game, uh, either rematch with Ohio State or, or to Indiana, and maybe Genty goes nuts and they went out and maybe – uh, he does win the the, uh, the Heisman, but uh, yeah. Can he's Hunter afford a loss? Can Hunter still win this even if they he, lose one more that's, game? That's that's yeah. the thing that I don't. You think he can, Sammy? Yeah. I, well, they're going to win two of the next three, if not all of them. So I think wait. if he wins out, he's good. They're going to win it. If they win the Big Twelve right. title with all the snaps being top, basically, right. you know what, top five or ten player at two different positions. It's yes. just uh, these quarterbacks. I know Gabriel's quarterback for an undefeated team. They could still lose the Big Ten title game. He hasn't been overwhelming. Ward, you mentioned. I think this is clearly his to lose. I just don't know if they lost one more. Could he still win? I think he could. I just don't know if he would. I think I that's think the question. Because if they win out, he's going to win it. I think a Big Twelve title game loss, he can still win it. I worry about. If they lose, if he go has a great game next week and they lose uh, in Kansas, like like what happens then? And they don't they could, make, and they don't make the Big Twelve championship. Yeah. That's the that's the one I worry about. By, by the way, I mean you kind of skipped over Genty there. Like, could you imagine a year where potential? I haven't seen an updated Bolitnikov market just because I don't we don't get it here in Connecticut. Like, could you imagine like you get the 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 Doak Walker winner is going to be Genty playing at Boise State. 
uh, Nick Nash, the, the kid from San Jose State, like he probably oh, is he's awesome. one of the top couple. I mean, two Mountain West players w- w- winning like the, the best individual yeah. players awarded in a position group. That's pretty crazy. And uh, selfishly, I, I have Jeremiah Smith at like 25 to 1. So I don't know if I'm going to – hope I get there with that, but I don't know. I'll have to see if I can find a uh, a Nash price somewhere along the way, maybe this weekend in Colorado and uh, – at least uh, recoup some of my investment there. Who's, who's going right. to win the Mackey too? Who's the? Is it the Bowling Green tight end from the Green. Mackey? It's yeah. really, he's yep. really good. Fanny. He's outstanding. Yeah. Uh, I had I had two comments. One, Talk Nick Nash is going to look great in a Chiefs uniform, isn't he? Oh, he's going to look so good <laughs> in Kansas City. And two, Bear gets to go back home again to I Boulder. <laughs> we're, we're, we're looking forward to a nice dinner on Friday night at Pasta Jays. Uh, get 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 some good Italian. Uh, uh, a good buddy of Urban Meyer, so we'll have a. I already been making the, uh, the the preliminary app order for all the tables. What we're going to get at each table, just to kind of speed things up. But uh, yeah, okay, l- looking forward to getting back to. Hey, good, good for them, by the way. Kicking it, kicking it, ten a.m. Mountain Time on Saturday, just because. Hey, look, they know, they get it. They they know what's at stake for 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 Travis and Shadur here to uh, uh to, to win all these awards and potentially get to the conference championship. They they know what's good for the uh. Uh, the, the program and speaking of the the Colorado game, uh, that's going to be our Super Six question of the week. Uh, we'll have that column coming out, of course. And one of the questions going to be, what will the outcome of that Utah at Colorado game be? Uh, Super Six, obviously presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, uh, buffs up to eleven and a half here, Jeff. Like uh, you hear about the news coming out of Utah, obviously the quarterback situation now, the injury. But people close to this program were saying that they have never seen yeah. uh, that football facility looking the way it did on on Monday morning mm-hmm. after uh, the way they lost the Holy War to, to BYU on Saturday night. Like this, th- this could be dead team walking, couldn't it? Well, I don't think it could. I think it is. Um, so they lost Brandon Rose now uh, at quarterback. So now they're back to Wilson, who was benched because he's a true freshman. He's young and wasn't very good. Um, and look, their defense is fantastic, Bear. We, we know that. But how good can a defense play when the offense can't support them? We see this each and every week where, you know, for the first quarter, quarter and a half, the defense plays great, and the offense goes three and out five straight times, and then all of a sudden the defense starts to crumble. This is what's going to happen on Saturday. Uh, Colorado's defense has gotten better this season, guys. I, I, a lot of folks on their offense. I don't, awesome. I don't think Utah like, scored. Like he could be, Livingston could be like your, your Brian Award. Well, not Brian. Uh, say, now what's the, uh, the what's the assistant coach award? Like I can't. Uh, it'll, it'll it'll come to me, but he, he could very easily win that. Yes, and so I just don't think they score any points in this game. Like I think it's a rough one. Then you know, eventually Colorado wears down the defense, scores points. I mean, the 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 I know Utah fans want to blame the holding for the loss, but the second half of that game was was sixty five yards on six drives, five punts, including two inside the fifty, and in and, and, and a turnover. Sam, it's just not good enough. Um, so. I think, I think Colorado handles business big here. And then the Colorado-Kansas game will be a lot of fun. That game is not at, it's, it's at Arrowhead Stadium, not, not at their home field. But that has sort of that November crazy Big 12 game um, you know, on my mind for that one. Yeah, I hate to be a box score patsy, but you look at Utah's last stretch, 22-21, 17-14, 13-7, there's a 23-10 in there, a 22-19. The only game I think that went over was Arizona State. Well, actually, that might not have gone, uh, gone over either. That stayed under, too. That was a Friday night game. It stayed under. So is that six straight unders for Utah? How do they score? I'm yeah. at that point now where I don't want to overthink it. Like, should I should I just lay Colorado or play under 47? Now, the 47s are mostly gone. Uh, DraftKings right now has 46 and a half. If Colorado wins, like, 38 to 10. I'm going to be so pissed off. You know, like that's my problem with the total. Like Jeff, just, I should bet Colorado, right? Well, well, like, yes, no doubt. Well, uh, yes. I, I will say one thing about Colorado's offense. I've had their team total over now uh, a couple of games. They're a little bit like we'll mention Oregon. Like they get to a certain point total and then just stop scoring. Like they've been at 34, 31, sort of around the low thirties. And then just the last four drives don't score or kick a field goal because they don't run the ball very well. So they're not really running out clock. Um, And then, you know, they just sort of throttle down the offense enough. So yes, I I don't think Colorado puts up 38 in this game against Utah because Utah's defense, I think will play stout early on in this game. I I see this like a 31, seven Sammy, something like that, like 28, seven 
Um, and that's sort of the game I see happening here. I, I think Colorado wins wins by multiple scores. Yeah, I like Colorado here. I just don't think Utah can score. And Colorado is going to get their points. And when, once Utah is down 7, 10 points, they have to play catch up and they have to throw the ball. Uh, good luck. They just have no passing <laughs> offense through, through for what, 111 yards last week against BYU. They can run in a little bit, but uh, Colorado is going have too much offense for them. I know you're not getting the best of the number at 11 and a half, but um, and it's not a good habit to, uh, you know, to lay the worst of the number, but you know, but sometimes even, even the worst of the number right. is still the, the right side. And I, I would want no part of Utah here. So I, I'm okay laying it with Colorado, honestly. And, and it might not be the worst of the number by the time we get to kick off. Sure. Either. It, it, this could hit this could 13 hit 13 or 13 something. Yeah. Or something like that as well. So still, you could be uh, getting better, but you could still beat the close. Uh, where, where, do, where do we go with, with, with Kansas BYU? I mean, BYU again, uh, Dodgers another another bullet last week. Uh, the holding call basically late after a sack. Everyone thought kind of the game was over, uh, and then Utah allows BYU to go down the field and kick that winning field goal uh, to keep their magical season alive. Uh, you, your your bear bite of the week. Uh, I just created a new uh, unsponsored element. Have to get sales on that maybe sponsor the bear bite of the week. Uh, since 1978, there have been 66 instances of a team 9-0 or better facing a team with a losing record at home. Every single one of those 66 were a double-digit favorite until this week when you've got 9-0 BYU against 3-6 and Kansas. BYU a three-point favorite here over the Jayhawks. Who And, and look, I, I think we all I, – I shouldn't say that. I don't want to put words in people's mouths here, but I think we all kind of kind of see what's coming here. you got a Kansas team that I think is what, 0-4? Four zero and five in, in one possession games, and BYU's four and zero. And one, it, it, you're talking coin flip. One one ball bounces the other way. One call goes the other way, and you're probably looking at a much different record for for both teams. We hit on it last week with Kansas about how Jalen Daniels has been playing much better over the last month of the year. He finally looks comfortable. Uh, they can run the ball. BYU, a Utah team that can't move the ball on air was able to run. You look at what BYU has allowed uh, the last couple of weeks on the ground at, in terms of yards per carry. Uh, last week, let me get my, uh, my my rushing numbers up that way I get them exactly. Uh, last week, five yards a carry to a bad Utah offense, over six yards a carry at UCF, uh, over seven yards a carry to a bad Oklahoma State team, allowed over five yards a carry, 230 yards on the ground to K-State. Like, can they keep doing this? I mean, it feels like we might be like too smart for our own good here. I'm taking Kansas. I'm going to take Kansas plus three. I'm going to take Kansas on the money line. Uh, anybody riding with me? I'm a hundred percent with you. I just think all the reasons you mentioned uh, Utah ran it for five yards a clip against a BYU team or with an offense where, you know, you can't throw it, you know, they're going to run it and they still ran it on will against BYU Kansas. And if you play the season over a hundred different times, uh, the results probably look a lot different, a lot better most of the time. Cause all of these losses, except I think it was Baylor beat them by 11. Other than that, it's all coin flips. It's all boy, some turnovers. And I know turnovers are part of the game, but that can be fluky. Uh, I think Kansas is the better team. I think Kansas wins. I think BYU is just overdue for one of these losses here, Sammy. I think we get points. I mean, this total has been bet up. So that's some agreement numerically 56 and a half. Uh, Chris offshore has 57. That's sort of where I'm at. I'm like a 31, 28 final, maybe even higher than that. I mean, that's conservative. Could be 34, 30, something like that. You guys think Kansas is going to fight, right? That's the only, oh, yeah. the only question I had. Well, they're three and six. Like that's it. That has to be We're considered. Still for bowl game, yeah. um, I like the over. So if you guys like Kansas, that, that solidifies my thought that we're going to get points because Kansas will not wave the flag. I don't think they'll give up whether they're facing an undefeated team. They got a good quarterback. They got a good coach. I don't think they'll come out here and just not, not try. I think, I think you'll get a good effort from them. My only problem with backing Kansas is their defense is putrid. And I think that's why the over is probably in play here, right? Like it's just hard to back a team on the road with a defense that can't stop anybody. And they haven't really stopped doing one all season. They've had a lot of games where the defense has allowed points into games to cost them the game. I mean, BYU has the ball, down, you know, one to six points uh, on, on, on the final drive. The they, they did, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the over didn't hit in that game. Um, and <laughs> We uh, moved the over six <laughs> points, Jeff. Six <laughs> points we moved it. And it still didn't hit. Um, and, uh, yeah, because there's, there's no there's no CLV in college football. Um, and uh, I, I would 
be hesitant to take Kansas in this spot. Uh, the over feels like a much safer play in this one. Uh, um, talked about Boise and potentially their group of five situation here. Um, Tulane, kind of a tricky game here coming up against Navy. I, mean, I have to get my, 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 I gave, this is like helmet day on the Bear Bits podcast. Got a lot my, of props. You're like Carrot Top here. With I, do all the- a, I do have a lot of props here. Hey, hey people send me stuff. I got, I got a display. This one is not going to make it to New York, Jeff. This is, this is staying on my, uh, on my shelf. You got, BYU, you got Tulane, you got Navy uh, in, in a situation here where we could know the AAC, AAC championship game. Should Tulane win this game, they clinch a spot in the uh, in the game. Army would also be assured of a spot in the game because only one team uh, will be left with, with, with no losses, one conference game left. So uh, we, we could know a Tulane Army AAC championship game. And I'm still holding out hope on the green wave potentially at, uh, at eight to one to be the uh, group of five representative. Uh, this week, I I like this Tulane team. Uh, I think this is a good matchup for Tulane. They can defend the run. Uh, John Summerall is a really good uh, defensive-minded uh, head coach. Uh, I, I know what we're up, we're up to around seven right now. I think uh, is the number. I would lay it uh, before I took it, but but I, I think Tulane is really good. I'm with you, and you made a case for Tulane playoffs. I think uh, a few weeks ago at six to one, I tailed that. I think it's a good, but I think it's still around the same number. If you're looking for, hey, I have no action, just want to take a flyer and have a rooting interest. There's a path where they win this, they win the conference title game, which I think they'll do both, and then that just leaves it to Boise, where if Boise stumbles. I think they would get in because their two losses are what Oklahoma and Kansas State, very forgivable uh, against Power Five. They're more battle tested than Navy. Navy, you hey, look at the schedule; it's a lot of uh, you know Rice and Memphis and all these teams. They got exposed against. Notre Dame, they're just not that good defensively. Uh, I think Tulane rolls here. Seven is is a lot, but I think it's justified. I'm okay laying it here, Sammy. It's a pass for me, but we'll circle Nerd. back at the end. We do have FCS, so that's – Yep, I'll, I'll pass on Tulane Navy, Jeff. Well, I'll pass on a two to hear the FCS the FCS uh, play. <laughs> yeah, that's, don't bury the lead. Uh, don't bury the lead, nerd. Come on, what's oh. the pick? <laughs> All right, so – Wait, 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 wait. I've got my pen out so I can write this down. Go ahead. I got to find the rotation number. I got to dive way down the board for the. I don't even know who this team is. Is it available? Uh, while, 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 while you're looking for rotation number, I'll, I'll say we talked, you just mentioned Boise State, uh, Will. Like, that, this is not a gimme game for Boise this week in San Jose. We mentioned Nash. We meant that, mentioned that offense. Uh, they nearly beat Wazoo. Uh, they can score. Uh, I think with Boise, they, they Boise did not look great last week against uh, Nevada. You'll, you'll look at Boise's games on the road this year, uh, a kind of a, a one possession game going to the fourth quarter against Hawaii. The Oregon game, obviously, is a different category. Uh, UNLV, they were kind of they, they played well, fortunate to win. Like this is this is not a gimme here for uh, for Boise State this week. And I think even if they were to get to the Mountain West title game, like if they went out, they're going to get it. But like. People think we're going to get that Boise State UNLV rematch in that Mountain West title game. Colorado State is undefeated right now, and they end with a very favorable Mountain West schedule. We could kind of get a Colorado State Boise Mountain West Conference title game, which I think perception wise would hurt the Broncos. But Sammy, have you found that that magic uh, eleven digit number yet? Yeah, and I, I was kidding. Obviously, I know what this team is. Right. Uh, he's got. <laughs> That's just saying it because here's the problem. Like when I give these and they lose, it's always like nice pick, bitch. In my <laughs> mentions, you know, like, <laughs> people can handle a loss on Alabama. They can't handle a loss on this game. Rotation oh, number. I lost it. Hold on. It's so funny. Uh, 309011 Idaho State plus five or better. All right. Irv Cross, right? Didn't Irv Cross the, play at Idaho? Is that the State? Vandals? No, the Bengals. No, Idaho is the Vandals. Okay. It's, it's, it's the Bengals. So they're okay. at Eastern Washington. He thinks he, he says curve. the game, he says the game should be three. Thinks it's going to open about five or six. And uh he likes the oh, points geez. with I'm Idaho gonna, State. I'm gonna find this game on I'm gonna, have to, five or six. I'm gonna have to find this game on ESPN Plus. It's gonna burn my eyes with that red turf that Eastern Washington has. It's gonna be brutal to watch. <laughs> Oh, people are going to be so mad at me if they, I had to watch that red field and then they <laughs> lost. <laughs> Jeff Schwartz hates everything about the state of Washington. That, that's all I took that, out of that. that. That is certainly fair. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Anyway. D- don't like Pullman, Spokane, all of it. Seattle, not, none of it's fun. 
Right. So yeah, we, we got we got pasta jays on Friday in Boulder. We got a uh, a flight a flight to Denver, flight home. I'll be able, I'll be watching uh I'll be watching Tennessee George on the flight home. You know, no no ridiculous uh, travel situation. Ten a.m. kick. Uh, and anything else you need to know this weekend? Uh, how, how many Delta What's points? What's on the menu? Get? What's on the menu at this Italian place? What are we What are we going for? Uh, we're, we, well, we were the uh, what, what would I say for the app? Here, here, here was the app order uh, yesterday that I was kicking around to the, uh, the group. Uh, I said we need to go uh, each table. I, I said let's let, let's go around. Um, they're talking like big ten, big ten stuff here, like like real football stuff. Here we go. I said, let's go two orders of garlic nuts, three orders of meatball, an order of Russell Brussels, Brussels sprouts, uh, an order of uh, burrata for, for, for each table as, as an wow. appetizer. The, uh, as this is why Bear and I are friends, because to pre-order your appetizers yeah. multiple days in advance is such a fat guy move. You got to have a game plan. Do. Yeah, I know, but like man. multiple days in advance is is very like is is very far in advance. But I just want to know why you keep ruining Ohio State fans' lives. Can 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 you shed some light oh. on why on why you on why you hate Ohio State so that, much? That's clear. It's clearly. I mean, it'd be, I'd, I just have Tennessee fans hate me. Indiana fans hate me. Yeah. Now, now, I mean, hey, clearly, I was the person who drew up the uh, the, the contracts with the with the with the Big Ten schools, like Ohio State, the school. Which has in their contract they cannot play a night game over the final three weeks of the season. So uh, yeah, cl clearly that's our fault that the school won't play a night game over the the final three weeks of the season. So what what time is the cutoff for night game for the old for the old folks that can't go to an I Ohio State think, or Michigan game past past nighttime? I I think uh, it can't kick after uh, at like three thirty. I think is the latest it can kick. Oh wow! I think. Wow. I think I, again. I don't know that. I don't. I don't want to. I'm, I'm, I might be making shit up there, but, but, but I, I would assume by by night they mean. Why did you put that in the contract? I, I just wanted to piss people off. So I wanted to. I wanted to bring. I wanted to go back to the good old days where, like all those great Miami or Florida State games were like noon kickoffs. Uh, Michigan Ohio State used to be a great noon kickoff all the time. Still is obviously. Remember that Michigan Florida State game in like '91 was a noon kick. That, that's the crazy thing. Like. Uh, old man, get off my lawn! Like all these great games, like years and years ago, like were early kicks. And yes. now people people want. I will tell you who doesn't want that? The, the, the coaches. Coaches like getting that game out of the way and moving on to the uh, the following week. Okay, now that I've uh, made more people mad at me, I've made people hungry. Um, we're gonna, we're going to move on to to next week as well. Sammy, will appreciate you as always. Uh, good luck with all of your uh, wagers. Go, uh, go Bengals, Idaho State style. All right, Bear, we got a, a big sky matchup to wager on. Idaho State, the Bengals, Eastern Washington, uh, big one there. I'm gonna make sure to, to text the group with that with a number post on Saturday for us. <laughs> yeah, no, no way it'll be the number that we wanted now. No, That's no sure. chance because Sammy moves the number on our pockets. All right, my fade of the week, Bear. We talked about this earlier. I'm fading Utah. The number is 11 and a half for Colorado. That's what we have at, at, at taping. It was better early in the week. You made the point. It probably gets up to maybe 13. Now there might be some buyback. But here, even just if Brandon Rose is playing for Utah, who was their quarterback, they don't score any points, right? Let me pull my notebook out. 110th in, in points per drive this season. They have a red zone rate of 107th in scoring. They've only had 30 red zone trips all season. They score in barely, a touchdown, barely half of those. They're not even scoring points anyways. Now they go back to their true freshman quarterback on the road. Colorado is playing good football right now. Um, now the end of games, a little wonky. That was wonky last weekend, but they ended up. Yeah, they ended, yeah, they, they, their game management, they yes. need to clean some things up there with that game yes. management and, and some penalties. They but, did some stupid things. But it's not going to cost them in this game because they're going to be up by multiple scores. It might cost them against Kansas next week on the road. But I think more than anything else, I could give you numbers and, and whatnot. This is a vibes game, man. Vibes, bro. Like, Utah's dead. Like Bear, we we had two different sources, right? I have my guy. You have you have your sources. Like this is as low as Utah's been under Kyle Whittingham in, in many many years. Even when they first joined the Pac-12, the struggles were expected, and since then they've been just straight uphill. The way they lost that game, their athletic director going on the field yelling at the official, and going to the press conference yelling at the official. You take his anger out on the officials, obviously, but um, I think Colorado wins this game by three touchdowns. I, I don't see Utah being that competitive uh, by, by the time yeah. the game is over. Yeah, and, and I, I think 
Utah big picture as well. And, and I don't know any of this for sure, for certain. This kind of uh, speculation. Like I almost get the sense that maybe there was a little bit of a situation where the like Kyle Winningham, like entering the year, thought he was going to have a really good team, win the Big Twelve, get to the playoff, and kind of like right off into the sunset off of a successful year. Yeah, like he deserves to do get to the Rose Bowl multiple times and uh, making Utah a, a national power. And now with the way the thing is, the season is gone with injuries. You lose that game the way you did. Uh, not going to make a bowl game. Like it, the year didn't go the way that, that Kyle wanted it to or thought he was going to. So I, I wonder what happens now. Like, is there a little bit of a dejection? Like, I can't go out this way. Um. Well, I mean, the coaches will, will prepare like they're trying to win there, obviously. But that doesn't mean the team's going to execute in that way. Um. And right. uh, look, look, is, is there a path in this game for Utah's defense to start really fast? Force term. I mean, this yeah. is the best defense they played. Uh, Colorado's played since, since Nebraska. I mean, the, the the this is the one team we talk about this like how, what's the path to beating Colorado? It sort of is this right? Sort of hit the quarterback, stop the run, try to corral. I mean, the, the, the Utah defense can do that. I just don't know how much want to will be from the s- players. Essentially, like it's just it's college football. These eighteen, twenty two year olds. Are they thinking about the portal already? They're thinking about graduating? Thinking about this and that? Like it's a tough spot to be in for this program. So uh, I'm just going to fade I think early on, early on, I think you'll get some fight. Because at least the defense is as healthy in the front seven. It's very healthy, Healthy is what they had all year. And remember last year, they did a good, I mean, that was a, a, wasn't Utah playing like their fifth string quarterback against Colorado? They both, I think, and and, and Shadur was out too. They're, right, they, both so it was an ugly game. Yeah, it was twenty three. I think it was 27, 23, 17, something like that. So uh, that game means nothing for this year. All right, Bear, what's your best bet? Yeah, uh, time now again for our best bets presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, my best bet moved overnight from three and a half to four, but it is not going to deter me. Uh, Jeff, being that you have bet against UCLA so many times, and and you had to take a. Uh, a week off in doing so. I am going to hold the torch and carry it this week. Yeah. I am going to lay the four points with Washington at home uh, against UCLA. The Bruins have been a great story lately, and maybe they were not as bad as we thought with playing all those great teams in a row, Oregon, uh, Indiana, LSU. And uh, there was one other one that the one other good team that they played. Penn State. Defensively, they played better. And somehow last week, uh, they dominated the line of scrimmage, running the ball uh, on Iowa, at least in the first half. And then Iowa playing uh, converted linebacker at quarterback. Kind of, <laughs> uh, you, 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 you knew things weren't going to go well uh, for Iowa in that game. So, but give UCLA credit; uh, they got a chance to crash a lot of people's win totals of five and a half. If they can win uh, a couple of more games, but I don't think one of those games will be Friday night in Seattle. UW is a much different team. Uh, on on its home field than they have been on the road. Uh, expect Will Rogers to play. Yes, I know schedule has been a little bit of uh, like the differentials if you look at performance at home, performance on the road. But but I think an opportunity here to uh, to get bowl eligible uh, off week before the before the or the, uh, the the Washington Oregon game at the end of the I said Washington Oregon on purpose just to see uh, how you would react to that. By the way. Um, well, hey, we're one week at a time. We're one week. It's 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 Wisconsin one week at a week. time. Focus, Wisconsin laser. Week. Yeah, put, laser put, focus. Put, put the blinkers on and nothing on the outside. No. But uh, I I do like Washington yeah. at home this week. Uh, still lay in the four against UCLA. Um, this was going to be my my best bet. I didn't do it as you mentioned, Joe, because I take a, again bet against UCLA so many times this season. Uh, Washington five and excuse me four and one against spread at home this year. The one game they didn't cover, they beat Eastern Michigan by 19 points. Barely didn't cover that one. They're 0 and five ATS bear on the road this season. So just a much better home team. Also, you have a, a California team, really a Southern California team, going to the cold on a night Friday night bear. It's a prime opportunity to fade that team. It happens all the time with USC. Happens with UCLA. Look at, at the history of those teams playing in the Pacific Northwest, especially UCLA, uh, cold later in the season, even up in Utah or Colorado. It doesn't go very well for them. Um, so I like Washington as well. There is a concern about travel. You mentioned it, right? Short week after playing Penn State. And they are playing They are playing Rodgers. Uh, they benched him in that game against uh, against Penn State. So 
Uh, he's back on the field. All right, my best bet presented by DraftKings Sportsbook is Purdue under 10 half points. A little bit of juice in this one, Bear, but I'm, I'm comfortable taking it as of right now. Purdue plays Penn State. I was worried about Penn State last week, Bear, just sort of how they're going to look after losing to Ohio State. They look great. Like, that, no concern f- for me at all about – this defense. Um, That's also, the Penn State MO. They, they, oh, they I know. Beat up on the, they should beat up, it, and they can't beat any of the top 10 teams. Here, here's Purdue playing five light defenses this season. Nebraska, 10 points they scored. Notre Dame, seven. Wisconsin, six. In the last two games they played a, a defense, Kibble stopping them zero against Oregon, zero <laughs> against Ohio State. Bear, give me <laughs> maybe a shutout again this weekend, but I'll take Purdue under 10, 10 half points, hosting Penn State. Uh, in that, I think it's like a noon. It's like a noon game again. I don't know. It's on Big Ten Network, probably. Uh, I'll have it on a second screen. Yeah, they, 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 I have a hard time thinking that Purdue is going to score points again because this is the type of team that the Penn State will want to get the best possible playoff ranking that they can get. Uh, they'll want a home game. Uh, they certainly uh, oh, should it, not. Tr- it's a three thirty CBS game, national TV. <clears throat> I know it is. And I, thought it was like a, I thought it was a Big Ten Network game. They were joking in the gambling group chat about like all these Ohio State games at noon. Like Purdue, Ohio State was a noon game. Like that uh, Purdue should not never Purdue should never be on national television. They're terrible. Wow. But here we are. Here we are. And here we are again at the uh, at the end, my friend. Another another week in the books. Uh, appreciate all of you out there for downloading wherever you get your podcasts, uh, rating, reviewing, subscribing, uh, checking us out on the YouTube channel. You can uh, you get to see all my wonderful props this week, my Tulane helmet and my vintage Rutgers helmet uh, to, to bring a smile to your face, hopefully. Appreciate Sammy and Will for joining us again in the gambling group chat. Jeff, I will see you uh, Thursday in New York. Typical bagel order this week, by the way. Oh, back, like, back, we, back, we, back to the bagel? Back, 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 to, back to sausage, back back to ham, egg, and cheese on a salt. You got it, buddy. I back back to that. We, 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 went, we went once. <laughs> went once we mixed it up. Sausage, and sausage, egg, and cheese on an everything. Wasn't impressed with the everything bagel. Oh, last oh. Week. I was very disappointed oh, no. with it. Oh, no. We're, we're going to go back to basics. You got it. Ham, egg, ham, egg and cheese on a salt bagel. Look forward to seeing you on uh, Friday morning. Looking forward to talking some uh, some NFL guys on Thursday. And remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win. <laughs>